The best places to stay while visiting Havana are not hotels. Unlike any other city, you'll want to stay in Casas Particulares, guest houses. There's an endless number of fantastic places to choose from, and I'm here to help you narrow it down. Here are five that I can recommend that span from basic no-nonsense rooms to hip cool sleeps that'll make you feel like you're staying at a boutique hotel. Number five on my list is a basic low-cost option, the Casa Aris y Luis on Lamparilla near Parque Cristo. This is a small, clean, and basic fifth floor apartment with an important bonus, an elevator. Everything around here is so old, and I'm pretty sure this Formica wall is original. Like the table I had when I was a kid. Wow. This was the most intimate place that I visited, with family photos on the wall, a small comfortable room with a decent bed, and a large window that allowed me to take in the sights and sounds of Havana for the very first time. And I loved it. Number four is Casa Obrapia, also in Havana Vieja. This place was hard to contact and I had to do a walk-in, but it was worth it. More like a hostel than a casa, it's not pricey and has a great location on a quiet street in the middle of Havana Vieja. The rooms are really clean, well appointed, and very comfortable. The classic living room is a great place to hang out and absorb the sounds of the street drifting in from the balcony. And I especially like the patio bar on the roof that overlooks the street. We'll move over to Havana Central for number three on my list, Casa 303 on Calle Anamas. At $70 per night, it more than doubles the price of the others on this list. But sometimes, you get what you pay for. It's more like a boutique hotel. There's even a staff on hand to handle check-in, services, and any other questions you might have. And though I've always had great experiences with Casa hosts giving me advice, people that are more comfortable with a more formal setting might find this place preferable. Four separately owned units, it's managed by one of the owners, one of the new generation of young Cuban hipster entrepreneurs named Jordan, who had a dream and he's going after it. He's set about creating a shabby chic place that oozes with style. With touches of contemporary art, and hip, trendy, comfortable rooms. Casa 303 is the type of place to spend time chilling on the roof and enjoying the classic Havana skyline. We'll stay in Central for number two, Casa Ana Malecon. This place is all about the where. It's on the Malecon, directly across from the water. Guests here get to enjoy a stay in one of the classic buildings made famous in countless movies and photo spreads. The high ceilings and colonial decor create that classic Havana atmosphere that I was looking for. Fresh squeezed mango juice, strong coffee and sliced fruit are a fantastic way to start the day. But having this view to rest your eyes on really kicks it up a notch. I could stand here all day and watch these classic cars driving up and down the Malecon. Watch the fishermen in the morning and the waters are really calm this time of year. This is an experience that you'll find only in Havana. The rooms here are spacious and well appointed. And the one I had gave me a window with a view of the water that I was instructed to leave closed to avoid mosquitoes. I was mostly successful. We'll move back to Havana Vieja for the number one casa on my list, Casa Idania on the Calle Obispo. This place was special. Everything about it was outstanding, from its affordable price and prime location on Calle Obispo to the wonderful hosts that helped me out whenever I needed it. At three stories, this casa is huge, with accommodations that blew me away. Well, you never know exactly what to expect when you walk into a casa particular, but this is really a pleasant surprise. I've got a huge living room with a kitchenette, a bedroom that looks like it just got pulled from a Hollywood movie set, a really nice bathroom. It's not just a room, this place is a full-on apartment. And I'm up on the top floor with a, a little patio right outside. It's a common area, but I think I'm in the only room up here. It's really beautiful. The common areas downstairs are very clean. 
High colonial ceilings and classic decor made the other rooms nearly as cool as mine. And I love starting every day on the terrace with a strong cup of coffee and a solid breakfast overlooking the Calle Abismo. It's a good idea to have uh, breakfast at your Casa Particular because not only is it a much more elaborate meal than you're going to get for your $5 at a local cafe, it also puts a little bit more money into the hands of the local people. And I doubt you're going to get a view like this at your local cafe. <laughs> it's funny, I, I walked into the house and I saw this lump under the rug and it looked like maybe a basketball or something. I kind of didn't want to raise it up to see what it was. But it's Guter, the house turtle. Buenos dias, Guter. 